Hello, and welcome to another episode of I Demand a Homestead. My name is Amanda, and today what we're going to be doing is we are finally going to be bottling our elderberry wine, okay? Um, if you want to, you can check out the first video where I actually kind of start this wine, and that way you can kind of see the whole process right from the very beginning. I'll put a link to that video in the description of this one, okay? So this has been here for quite some time now. It's been a few months actually, um, just because we wanted to make sure that it had lots of time to finish its fermentation. And then it's been sitting here just allowing it to clear and all the sediment to come down to the bottom. So today we're ready to bottle. So what we're gonna do first of all, is we're going to rack this or siphon it into another big bucket, okay? Um, because that way it'll be easier for me to then kind of siphon the wine into bottles without being worried about disturbing the sediment because I'm going to make sure that we don't do that when I get this into the bucket. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the kind of cap off here with the airlock which kept all the air out of it so that it didn't kind of go bad. That's super important. And then I have, and this is all cleaned and sanitized, I have a uh, length of tubing here, which I am then going to put into this, okay? And again, I'm gonna make sure that I don't touch the bottom. And then what I need to do is I need to kind of suck up the wine um, all the way through this so that I can create a siphon. So I'll show you how we do that. So I've still got kind of an open area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hold this up so that it flows backwards. Then I'm going to suck up some more. So now it's completely filled with the wine. And then what we do is we just put it into the bucket. And that keeps the suction going. And you can kind of see that the water, the wine water, the wine level is going to start coming down off this. And it's important to do this to make sure that you're siphoning from a higher level to a lower level. Otherwise, it won't work. And now what we'll do is we'll just kind of come back when this is all done. Okay, so we now have our uh, big fermenting bucket filled with our beautiful wine. All right, and now we are going to put it into the bottles. And I'm going to use something, it's, it's like a, a bottling wand, and this is a special thing that you'd purchase, and it has a little kind of... Um, depressor here and what happens is when you put that in the bottom of the bottle of wine it allows the wine to flow and then as soon as you lift it up it actually stops flowing which is really nice it allows you to kind of um, not have to really kind of stop in between and, and pinch off the, um, the tube of wine. So what we're going to do is the same thing again where I'm going to do that siphon and create a suction. So I'm going to attach this, okay, like so, and then I'm going to create that suction. Okay, so you can see that this is where this kind of little um, gadget, this, this bottle wand is really great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my bottle and I put the wand in there, and as soon as it gets to the bottom, it immediately starts to fill it up. Okay, so then I'm going to bring that wand down in, and you can see it how nicely it starts to fill that up. Don't mind the kind of white color on there, that's the kind of potassium metabisulfite. Okay, so then we get to the end there. Let's see if I can do this with one hand, and then I kind of just depress it against the side, and it fills it up to where I want. And then I just move on to the next bottle. Okay, so now we have been busily filling up bottles and Dave has been corking. So we're going to show you our corker here. Are we just going to step out of the way? <laughs> so this is a cool little device if you're going to do any kind of home winemaking that you should really think about investing in. You can get ones that are handheld corkers, but they're awful. At least the one we had was awful. So Dave is going to show you how this works. Right, Dave? Hello. Hello. I will show you. Okay. All right. So explain it, Dave. Okay. So basically, you get a bottle. What you want to do is you want to center it. There's a number of concentric circles in there to kind of grip it. 
Make sure you kind of see the circle in there. Hang on. So you might want to take a look so you see the circle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, circle. yes, 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 circle. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, cork. Uh, you know, in the past, we talked about whether or not you needed to wet the corks ahead of time and everything else like that. That actually is not necessary whatsoever. You can actually just use uh, corks. The best thing to do is get these things from the actual wine store. Uh, but if you run out in an emergency, you can always go to like a craft store and get corks as well. But anyway, <laughs> you get the cork, mm -hmm. so you plop it in there. Yeah. And then what I do is because it requires a little strength, I put my, my foot down and then I'm like this. And then it's gonna be pushing down with one fluid movement. So here we go. Okay, open it up, push it down like that. Ooh. And there we go. Beautiful. Now, a couple of things to notice about this, as much as possible, you wanna get it so that it's either on level or just a little bit above. Notice that there's no breaks or cracks there. Well, that's good because you don't want any air getting into this. True. Especially when you're gonna turn the wine its side to kind of rest for a little bit. You wanna make sure there's nothing coming up. Um, incidentally, we like to kind of sit the bottles up for at least a couple of days to make sure that none of the corks are gonna back out um, because that can happen from time to time. And the last thing you want to do is put them on their sides and find out that some of your, your corks are going to back out and then you lose your bottles of wine. So once you're done all this, you're going to give it a couple of days before you then going to put it into your wine bank. All right. So, and as soon as you're done opening or rather corking the bottles, as soon as you're done corking the bottles, you can then, if you have any that happen to be, oh, not as perfect, you can open it up and try out your wine, which is what we are going to do in just a minute. Okay, ready? Moment of truth. Looks pretty good. Beautiful color. Nice and clear. Mm-hmm. Okay. Salut. Cheers. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's good. That's really nice. Okay. Good work. So, we are going to sit here and enjoy the fruits of our labors. And uh, if you like this video and you like wine, please feel free to press the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you never miss another one of our videos. All right? And please drink responsibly. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ah. That was pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah I like it.